How's it going, everyone? My name is George, and today we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Super Superhero. That's right, I got to see the newest Dragon Ball film today, and believe it or not, this is the first time I've actually seen a Dragon Ball movie on the big screen. I've been a big fan of the Dragon Ball franchise since I was a little kid, and usually I never know when these movies come out in theaters if they ever do, so I had no idea at the time. A few years ago, Dragon Ball Super Brawly came out, and I did get, get to watch that film after it came out in theaters, and I love that movie. But this time, I actually paid attention to social media, and I heard people talking about it. I checked to see if the film was playing at my movie theater, which it was, and I got to see it on an APAC screen, which has great sound, is half IMAX, and I had a blast with the film. I'm a big fan of the Dragon Ball franchise, and it was great to finally see some of my favorite all-time characters appear on the big screen. So in Dragon Ball Super, Superhero, Goku and Vegeta are training on Beerus' planet with Brawly, so they're not on Earth. And the Red Ribbon Army is trying to rebuild itself, and they are creating these new androids, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. And so Piccolo and Gohan are really Earth's best defenders right now. And... To me, this is the Dragon Ball film that I think understands the frustration of fan of fans. The fact that Gohan and Piccolo have kind of felt neglected in the Dragon Ball franchise for quite a while. And what I mean by neglected is that Goku and Vegeta have really become like overpowered compared to characters like Piccolo and Gohan. And they really haven't had that moment to shine like they've had their moments to shine but to be back in this kind of spotlight i think is really great especially for two characters like like these guys that have had a close bond since the beginning of dragon ball z when piccolo took gohan and was training him and they developed that special bond and i'm not saying goku's a terrible father he has his moments as a father but I've always felt the bond between Piccolo and Gohan have has always been more interesting and something that I've loved more than Goku and Gohan's relationship. I still think Goku, who has his great moments as a father, I don't think he's that bad of a father compared to like how some of the memes have, have pointed out. But I've always felt like Piccolo has understood Gohan better than Goku has throughout the franchise and he's acknowledged that you know, Gohan has not been training as hard and it's something that even that we the fans have noticed for quite a while even before Dragon Ball Super became a thing so it's great that they've acknowledged that and you really get to see Gohan shine once again in this movie like we gotta remember this guy as a kid beat Cell so it's great to see him back in his element it's also great to see Piccolo once again, becoming a powerful force. Because Piccolo is also very powerful. People forget how strong this guy was. Like, how brutal this guy can be when he fights as well. And I like the new the new additions, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. They're the kind of, like, characters that, like... What I like about them is they're different from the other androids in the past. They think they're the heroes. And they wisen up and realize that, hey, um, Gohan the gang maybe aren't the real villains, maybe the Red Ribbon Army are the villains, because they're created to believe that Goku and the gang are the bad guys, they're these aliens that are trying to take over the planet, but over time, these two characters realize that maybe they're in the wrong. And also, uh, Dr. Jerome's grandson's in this film, and I like that he also has character to him, he's not like a one-dimensional villain, like he's got character, he's got a character arc as well, so... Overall, I feel like the way they handled the characters, even the new characters, they handled very well. It definitely takes a while for the film to start. I think the beginning of the film did feel pretty slow. I get it. You wanted to have that same impact that, that you had with Dragon Ball Super Broly by setting up the villains. But it felt like Broly did a better job of setting stuff up, making it at least more interesting before we ultimately get into the main action. Another thing that's interesting about this film is that this is a Dragon Ball film that relies mainly on 3D animation. Now, I still prefer the 2D style of animation that they've always used for Dragon Ball prior to this. And at the beginning of the film, it really felt weird. I felt like the animation fell off. But as the film progressed, maybe it's due to the fact that they got better with the 3D animation, or 
maybe it just like it it grew on me, but I felt like it got better as the film went on. So they definitely there was something that definitely improved with the three D animation as the movie went on. Uh, so this is also the English dub, and I grew up on the English dub, so this is the one of the few English dubs of anime that I've always enjoyed and loved. And the voice actors once again still have it. Christopher Sabat as Piccolo is always awesome to hear. And yeah, Goku and Vegeta are also in this film, but they're training on Beerus' planet. But in the small time that they have, it's fun to see those guys again, as always. I also love those characters, Goku and Vegeta. Although Piccolo and Gohan are probably my two favorite Dragon Ball characters of all time. So this was like a film that was made for me. Uh, the fight sequences are as cool as always. It's great to, great to watch them. This has more humor in it than Brawly. Like this definitely had a Dragon Ball feel to it. Like, I mean, Brawly did as well, but this like with like the balance of humor and those like serious moments definitely did. They're also pretty self-aware of other stuff in this franchise as well. Not just the fact that like Gohan has been slacking with his training, but there's like some acknowledgement with like Krillin like later towards the end that was pretty funny. But what I what really made me interested in this film is and enjoy this film a lot is the fact that it felt like not just Gohan and Piccolo were the main focus, but they went back to the Red Ribbon Army, they went back into the androids. And also, there's like a new cell at the end. And don't get me wrong, I love that Dragon Ball Super brought back Frieza, that we got to see Frieza again. But over time, you want to, like, Frieza can get old, and you want to see the other big threats return. And while this isn't the cell from the Cell Saga, and that's one of my all-time favorite sagas in Dragon Ball, like, just to, like, acknowledge that again, like, just acknowledge the androids again, and like trying something new with, with that, trying to rebuild the Red Ribbon Army, going all the way back to Dragon Ball. Just really, the Dragon Ball fan in me really appreciated that. Like this was fan service done right, in my opinion. Like we've seen fan service done wrong in the past, but we've also seen fan service done right. And they've done better with fan service movies in general, but in here they really did it well. At least the fan inside of me. I still think Dragon Ball Super Brawly was a better film, and I think part of that's due to the fact that the beginning of that film was a whole lot better. But all in all, I had a great time with Dragon Ball Super Superhero. It's great to see Gohan and Piccolo back in the spotlight, taking on the roles as, as the main protagonists in this film. I like the characters Gamma 1 and 2. I think they were really interesting characters. I enjoyed revisiting the Red Ribbon Army. And also the fact that they tried getting a new cell in there. And that cell was actually pretty powerful. Like, at first, like, when he came in, I thought, is this going to be, like, Doomsday from Batman vs. Superman? And you might make that comparison, but I like just how they handle him. He's not, like, the cell that we knew from, from Dragon Ball Z. It was something different, and I liked how they handled it overall. But... All in all, I'm going to give Dragon Ball Super Superhero an A-. I highly recommend you check this out if you're a Dragon Ball fan, especially if you're a fan of Gohan and Piccolo. I feel like this movie was made for you, so go check out Dragon Ball Super Superhero if you haven't already. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe already. If you haven't, please share this with someone that's a big Dragon Ball fan. And I hope to see you guys real soon. Oh boy, it's thundering outside. Anyways, I hope to to review Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets and Clerks 2 this week. Catch up on those review series. Take care. Take care, everyone.